and welcome to Dad Rail. My name is Danny and today we'll be looking at level crossings. You may remember last year we made a video explaining why barriers go down early. If you haven't seen it, I will leave a link below. From that video, we had a few people contacting us to ask what happens when the level crossing goes wrong, so we sent Richard to find out. Level crossings are a common sight across the UK and have been around since the railways were built roughly 200 years ago and with around 6,500 mainline level crossings and a further 1,500 on heritage lines it's no surprise that more often than not your journey will take you across the railway line on the level. Most people don't give passing over a level crossing a second thought and rightly so because as long as you follow the traffic signals and only cross when it's safe to do so then level crossings are actually very safe. In fact, level crossings in the UK are amongst the safest in the world and we're second only in Europe to Luxembourg and Luxembourg only has 140. But what happens if a level crossing goes wrong? Well, thankfully level crossing failures are few and far between and level crossings are designed to fail safe. That is, if they fail, then they should fail with the barriers down or road lights flashing and in the case of a control crossing, the railway signal set to red, preventing trains from passing. Despite all of this, although very rare, it's not unheard of for level crossings, particularly automatic crossings to fail with the barriers up and road lights off. Now we had lots of fun filming that reconstruction and I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone that helped us to do so. Now, as dramatic as that may have looked or as dramatic as it hopefully looked, complete level crossing failures in this manner are extremely rare. As we said earlier, level crossings are designed to fail in a safe way. Now to understand the procedures and rules concerning level crossing failures, we need to look at the difference between controlled crossings and automatic crossings. So here's a short animation. Automatic crossings are operated, as the name suggests, automatically by sensors on the track known as treadles. When the train passes over the treadle, the road lights start to flash and the barriers begin to close. You can tell an automatic crossing as it only has barriers on one side of the road to prevent vehicles becoming trapped. There are no railway signals on the approach to automatic crossings and they are not monitored. Therefore there is no way of knowing if the crossing is obstructed or not and no way of telling train drivers if it is safe. You are relying on motorists following the rules of the road and not stopping on the crossing. Controlled crossings nearly always have full width road barriers and are operated either manually by a signaller or automatically by track circuits. After a controlled crossing has been closed, it is checked either visually through the use of CCTV or by obstacle detection systems. Only once it is confirmed that the crossing is clear of any obstructions can railway signals be changed from red to green to allow trains to pass. Starting with automatic crossings, the signaller will be notified of a failure of the crossing by either an alarm bell ringing in the signal box or, more often than not, a member of the public phoning up complaining that they've been waiting at the crossing for ages. When a signaller becomes aware of a failure of the level crossing, he has to inform the driver of all approaching trains that the crossing has potentially failed. He'll advise the drivers of the trains to approach the crossing slowly with caution and only pass over the crossing if it's safe to do so. Now believe it or not, trains can pass over the crossing with the barriers up, providing it is safe to do so. Although trains are allowed to pass over the crossing with the barriers open, this isn't the best situation, not the best method or the safest method of working. It's only a short-term stopgap until the signaller can arrange for a member of staff to go to the crossing and repair it. Now, while the crossing is being repaired, it's often operated locally by a crossing attendant. Now, when a crossing is being operated by a crossing attendant, they will supervise the operation of the level crossing at the level crossing itself in situ. Now, they'll do things such as stop the road traffic and, if possible, manually operate the gates. Some gates have facilities for, for pump handles or they have manual control panels. When a crossing attendant is in situ, the signaller will advise the drivers of all approaching trains that the crossing has been operated in this manner and the crossing attendant will be required to show the driver of each train a green flag to indicate that it's safe to pass over the crossing. 
Control crossings are quite similar to automatic crossings, except control crossings, as you'll know from the earlier animation, are protected by railway signals. So when a control crossing fails, in theory it should be impossible for the signalman to clear the railway signal. Now the signalman will contact the driver of all approaching trains once they've stopped at the red signal approaching the crossing and advise them that the crossing has failed. Now the signaller can authorise the driver to pass the red signal and proceed over the crossing regardless of the barrier position, providing it's safe to do so. As with automatic crossings, the signaller may want someone to go to the crossing and operate it locally. Now, if this is the case and the crossing is being operated locally, there's no need for the crossing attendant to give a green hand signal. This is because the crossing is protected by signals. Rather than the crossing attendant showing a green hand signal to the driver, the crossing attendant informs the signaller that the crossing is clear and the signaller informs the driver that he's okay to pass the red signal and proceed over the crossing. There are a number of other procedures that are used in relation to crossing failures when we talk about open crossings and locally monitored barrier crossings and other various types of crossings, but they're a bit outside the scope of this video. We just wanted to cover the basics, but if you want to know more about this, and I'll put a link to the RSSB rulebook, it's the railway rulebook, in the description below, and you can read all about these crossing failures. Now I'd just like to say thank you for watching this video, I do hope you've enjoyed it. Now if you want more mainline heritage and model railway videos, please do click that like and subscribe button, and we hope to see you again in the future. And don't forget, create, share, and inspire. Thanks for watching.